have a weird thing with the letter T, because sometimes they overpronunciate the letter, like that, and sometimes they ignore the letter completely. <laughs> it's like, what happened? Where did the letters go? And there are two T's in the word letter, and yet they're nowhere to be found. And I understand if there's like one T, you just missed it, you know, that's fine, whatever, whatever, one T gone, fine. <laughs> but when there are two T's, you just skip over it like that, it's just rude. It's like the letters don't even matter. <laughs> but it's not just the English, every accent has a weird relationship, a weird relationship to one letter, right? Like the Russians, the Russian accent, it's the letter Y. They take the letter Y and they put it between every other letter. Take any sentence, like, this traffic is unbelievable. They'd be like, this traffic is unbelievable. I cannot believe it. We have been sitting here for 15 minutes. And those are the videos of our next guest. She is an on-air personality and her show is Breakfast in the City on City FM. She's an actor, she's a host, she's a comedian, she's many things and we'll get to find out what the other things are. She is not Belarus and she's also Belarus Okoje. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Ollie. Hi, Belarus. Finally, right? As in, <laughs> we've been planning this interview since 1999. I know, <laughs> I know. Good I to know. have you. It's good to be here. So, am I talking to Belarus now? Or not Belarus. Belarus. Okay, let's talk to Belarus. But yes. I want to speak with not Belarus. She's my favorite. I'll talk to her. All right. Okay. <laughs> so let's talk about Belarus. You know, growing into this, I, I knew of you when you were younger with your sister Benita Uje. Yes. By the way, I'm a fan of the sister Hudi Boche. It's Thank absolutely you. beautiful to watch. Thanks. But you know, the days of Osemudiame. Can you take us back through those memories? Let's relive them for a bit. Ah, they were really the most exciting times of my life, to be honest. Um, I never miss a chance to just play back my childhood. Uh, my parents, awesome people, my dad of blessed memory, and of course my mom uh, holding on to that legacy. Um, it was fun. I would follow my sister literally everywhere. My sister, as you know, can be very shy and a bit reserved. And so I'm literally the most outspoken of all uh, my siblings. I mean, in the video, you were doing all <laughs> You know the what attitude. I mean? <laughs> and my dad would add many times, if my sister had to record a music video, my dad would say, um, OK, so Bella, you need to dance. You need to ginger Benny. And I'm like, is that all I have to do? Oh, fine. And I would just go there. And I wasn't the best dancer. But because it was something I really loved to do, and I saw it as also supporting my sister's ministry and her career, it w I just needed to hear the word go, and I would just go and do that. Um, and it opened me up to a lot of opportunities. I learned so much. A lot of the things that I do now are things that I picked up when I was just go following my sister on her media rounds and her tours, etc. I wasn't using them then, but I'm much older now. I'm using all of these things, the knowledge, the exposure, um, and the experience really is so useful now that I'm much older than in the media. How would you say, or what would you say are the factors that have helped build the fantastic relationship that you have with your sister? Also seeing that, you know, I don't know if you, if you ever experienced some sort of sibling rivalry at any point, but it seemed that at the start of both your careers, you know, she was the light. Did you ever feel threatened by her? Never. Like, I, I, sometimes people find it hard to believe, and I'm not sure why, but I think that my parents play a major role. We would never, in fact, my mom must be watching right now, and she's going to be like, no, it is the grace of God, and yes, it is the grace of God. <laughs> we love you, mommy. <laughs> um, I, I know that God helped my parents to just bring us up the right way. My dad was the showbiz guy. He was in the industry uh, before he got married. Um, and my mom, right, was the church person. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so she was the one who would uh, take care of the home front on some, you know, in some instances. And she'd remind us that, look, regardless of the exposure you have, you better go and wash plates. You better <laughs> learn how to do this at home, you know? Um, and so it was kind of balanced. You know, my dad gave us the showbiz life and my mom you know was the one who really helped us to kind of balance things out um, and there was nothing like sibling rivalry my mom would always say all the time that look what your sister is doing as a music minister regardless of her age is to the glory of god and you play a major role in making sure that this thing succeeds but i'm also sure that you know just as you have said you play a major role mm -hmm. what would you say to people who envy or covet the relationship that you have with your sister because it is so beautiful you know, mm -hmm. if I have girls, I want my girl to be as close as you and your sister are your, like, best friends. <laughs> what would you say to people who have gotten to this point where they feel like there's, there's been so much sibling rivalry, but they want to overcome that? I think that, to be honest, love is such a, it's, it's a really strong word. And for you to come to a point where you really love someone and you don't care if they are in the spotlight and you are in the background, that is really all there is to it, you know? And um, my sister is a loving person. 
It, she is so easy to love, you, you know? So um, I would be really evil to not love her and support her. And my parents also, I will always go back to the grace that God gave my parents to help us understand that we are all amazing children. Um, and of course, this will also go to parents out there. Comparing your children is not really advisable, right? My parents will tell my sister, or let me not tell her, but you know, make all of us understand that like, your sister is a singer and this is the gift God has given to her. You, Bella, are the talker of the house and you are great at it. You know, Benjamin, my older brother, is very handy. You know, he, he can fix anything at home. And my younger brother also, great with spoken word as well. And he's such a caring person. So they were able to identify the strength of each child. And I think that, to a large extent, helped us to just love each other naturally. Because we knew, I can't sing as well as my sister. My sister may not be uh, as much a talkative as I am, you know. And so each person contributes to the life of the other and supports them that way. So love them so much. And, you know, the talent that you have, use it to the glory of God and to support that sibling as well. Beautiful. Before we move away from your, you know, talking about your family, it was Father's Day a few days ago. Yes, it was. And I know that your father's passed on to glory just yeah. like mine. Aww. What would you say would, you know, are the fun, would you share one fond memory of your dad? Ah, fond memory. There's so many. So, okay, I'll share this one. Um, my dad also was very close to us. You know, we're very, we still are a very tightly, a closely knit family. And so my dad sometimes would take my sister and I out, you know, he lets him maybe go somewhere or whatever. And um, my dad loved to laugh. Jeez, <laughs> he loved to laugh. And so one day we saw this guy in the area. You know how there's people in the area who just like to greet you. You may not really know them, or maybe you have been seeing them. Um, and so the guy saw my dad and he goes, ah, Baba Benita, <laughs> long time ago. He was supposed to say long time, no see. But he said long time ago. And my dad was like, hey, you don't give us one for the road. And my sister and I were in the car, and we were cracking up so much. My dad kept a very straight face. Because I was looking at the guy, and he was like, hmm, this one, you don't give us one for the road. <laughs> my son and I were cracking up so much. My dad had a straight face, and he's like, ah, ah, my friend, how now? How things? And we're like, dad, this is not fair. <laughs> you know, we're cracking up so much. And he did that a lot of times. And anytime someone said something that was not grammatically correct, my dad was big on correct English. If anyone said something that was not grammatically correct, my dad would, you know, he would say something, and we'll be there, we'll be cracking up, but he would keep a straight face, like, you know, not saying anything, but we'll be cracking up so very much. I think we see where you got your your <laughs> comedic bone from. Perhaps. Because now you're one of, I, I mean, one day I stumbled on Not Belarus, yeah. which is, I think, maybe your alter ego. Yes. And I was binge watching every video <laughs> and crying. And I remember putting up a post you to say that me. I was crying. <laughs> and I had to say, everybody, you need to follow this girl. How did you discover Not Belarus? Um, again, it goes back to just how we tend to express ourselves in my house, right? Um, I know there was a time we would watch um, some channels on satellite TV, and some of the movies would go like, you know, a child referring to their dad, and they'll say, Papa, you know, and it didn't seem very organic. So at home, we would be imitating those things. So if we talk to my dad, we'd say, ah, Papa, how now? How are you? And my dad would be laughing. Um, and I think that was where this all started from. Um, we would just be very comedic. Sometimes if I needed my dad to do something for me, I would act like a really small baby just so he could be on my side. Um, and he would just be laughing. He's like, ah, Bella, Bella. So that was, I think, where it all started. We love to laugh in my family. We really love to laugh. So um, that definitely was the genesis of a lot of the things that you see now. Not Bella Rose. Um, how would you say that the response and the acceptance has been? Incredible. I mean, I'm a huge fan. I didn't even see it coming. You know, I was just like, okay, I'm doing this thing at home. That's really how I am sometimes at home. I'm just really goofing off. And then my sister said, put this on Instagram now. It just... And I said, okay, fine. I put a few on my actual page. And then later, I got on Snapchat, saw a few more filters, and most of them are spontaneous. A lot of things I sit down and script or anything. I'm just on Snapchat, and I see a filter, and a character comes in, and I just record it right there, and I post. Um, and so she said, put it on Instagram. I said, okay, fine. And I opened an alternate handle and started posting stuff. And people would DM me and say, thank you for this. Like, you have I mean, made me really crack up, yes. brought me out of a bad mood. Some would say, I like how satire, how, uh, uh, you, how, sar how satirical you are with, you know, talking about issues. Because I also did some kind of satire with some issues as well. I remember well. the one you did with the, the NEPA officers. There was that oh as well. Oh, my God, I think that was my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> there was one about crossing the national red line and people being, you know, colorblind. You know, so it was incredible. I never saw any of this coming. And quite honestly, while I'm not as active anymore, you know, People you have to be active. I know, I know. <laughs> People are saying stuff like, okay, I want you to just please talk about my business on your page and I will pay you money for it. I'm like, this was not the idea. <laughs> Which leads me to my next question. Right. How would you say social media has helped your brand? It has helped it 
So, so much. I need to be very honest. Um, as someone who comes from a family who tends to keep um, their private life private, it, it takes a lot of work because it's like, okay, I want to remain that person who doesn't put all that I'm doing out there. But then again, because I'm in the media, right, and showbiz sales, you have to show them what you're doing in order for that business to come. Um, but it has helped greatly. People are still able to read between the lines and see that um, talent is what is being showcased on, on social media. And so they are either buying into it or just um, connecting with it on many different levels. So it's helped greatly. It's brought business. It's brought great friendships. I met you. I know. I met you. I mean, if this is all I get on social media, I think it's worth it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> you have to see not Bella Rose in real life here. Mm. Hey. <sighs> you didn't think where we should see her? Well, what happened is this. I don't share. You didn't show? I'm not sure because let me tell you something. I don't come with her. She's at home now. <laughs> oh, you do it effortlessly is what amazes me. <laughs> Let's check out one of her videos. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up this conversation. Please don't go away. No, please, please, please. This is not the place you go for me. Which place are you carrying me? Come on, for, for this kind of work, bro. Please stop lying. I told you. I told you, Fagba. You heard me very well. I told you that I was going to these streets. It's not your fault. I blame myself. I'm not a taxi driver. I should marry my son. Roll or you you see. Rubbish. Did you just hit your sister? Yeah, but she started it. Say sorry. I'm sorry. Say it like you mean it. I'm sorry. No, say it like you mean it. But I just did. Say it like you mean it. I'm so sorry. Was that better? This is just a tip of the iceberg. <laughs> I promise you, this is not the best of Bella Rose. If you want to see that personality, you should follow her on Instagram at not Bella Rose. Have yourself a good laugh on my behalf tonight, <laughs> and then you can go to sleep peacefully. Now, what would you say to uh, people who aspire to be like you? You're an actor. You're a comedian, whether you like it or not. You're you MC, you MC events as well. I do. Yeah. I do. I do. And you're what are the I'm other on things radio. you do? Your radio. Yes. Um. I also am co-founder of Tech City NG and Green Street Media. Um, it's a tech company. We do get it reviews, etc. Um, and yeah, look at all I the many things well. you do. So you're you're, you're multifaceted. You're multi-talented, and there are many people who want to express all their talents as much as you do. And they're being told, no, you have to face one, find one, and focus on one. Forget the others. What would you say to them? I want to say that don't apologize for being multi-talented. Really, don't don't feel bad about it. Um, I'm going to preach right now. God gave us many different talents. And he gave some, he gave two. Mm. Another, he gave ten, the king in the Bible. Um, and so you can definitely use your gifts in many different ways, right? So I am on radio on CTFM in the mornings. And that's literally how I start my day. I'm, I'm sharing information. I'm being a talker, right? On Sundays, I'm acting in church in the drama department. Um, other times during the day, I'm either at you know Tech City doing gadget reviews and using my talents in all of these ways, while I'm writing, while I'm helping my sister with any other thing, um, with press releases and the likes. And so I think that trying to knowing exactly how to use your talent is important, right? Don't try to put all your eggs in one basket and try to be everything at once. You need to understand the importance of uh, being one thing here, being something elsewhere. And availing yourself, really, because I think that to a large extent it helps you grow and helps your skill um, get uh, more polished, right? And so uh, when you see opportunities, grab them as fast as you can. Grab them so much. Um, and look out for things that are useful, right? Social media is so big. This is the internet, you know, is, is agog ag with information. And I think that um, using your data to search for stuff that is not going to edify your spirit or stuff that would not add to your knowledge base is a waste of money and time. So use your, the internet to research on how you can be a better person. If there are academies out there that are helping out with you know, being a better presenter, being better with maybe acting or whatever, then go for it. It might cost some money, but it is worth it at the end of the day. Invest in yourself. Absolutely. No wiser words have been said. Do not apologize for being multi-talented. Some are giving two talents, some are giving five talents, some are giving one talent. But what are you doing with the talents that you were giving? These are the wise words. From not, okay, they are not really your wise words. I'm just reiterating what the Bible says. That's it. That is really it. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, you're going to give us our signing out line. Mm -hmm. But thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, today on the show, we have World Refugee Day. We have reports that over 70 million people displaced worldwide. This should be a wake-up call to our leaders. And more importantly, we should look at the fact that insurgency constantly renders lots of Nigerians displaced, you know, rendering them homeless. We need to take a look at our internally displaced persons and collectively, 
work on our security problems in Nigeria. But that's all we have for you on the show. Thank you for joining us. Remember to follow all our guests. Remember to follow um, G, uh, Onyx and Breaks. You can follow the, the founder at D Opekeze. That is D W E Opekeze on Instagram. You can follow our, uh, our other guests um, at Saint Peter's Bell. You can check for her on Instagram as well. And you know, visit their website at www.revisitation.com if you want to be a part of the event. And you can follow her on two accounts, <laughs> Bella Rose Okoje. And if you want to really, really laugh, you should follow not Bella Rose Okoje. You can also follow me at Oliver Modi. I'll be signing out, but I leave her to do the signing out for us. Okay. All right, it's up to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say a very big thanks for watching the show. This is Hello Nigeria. Hello. This is Nigeria calling. Pick up the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Nigeria. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.